Um, thanks for all of you who, who, who came last time and, and, and went to the problem solving session. So Diane told me that there unexpectedly many problems have been solved, so that's great. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, let, me, let me recall uh, what we did last time. Okay, so uh, we uh, defined these tridiagonal models, uh, tridiagonal model for Or GOE, right? Uh, so it was a Jacobi matrix of the form A1, A2, and so on, B1, B2, and zeros here. Uh, and the AIs were um, IID normal 0, 2, and the BI uh, were chi of n minus i. And all of these things are independent, right? And, <coughs> uh, and, and, and what we proved is that this matrix has the same eigenvalues as GOE. Uh, and moreover, not just the same eigenvalues, but also the same spectral measure uh, at, at the first entry. Okay. So that's what, that's what uh, we did last time. Uh, and we also used the, this representation to, to prove the Wigner semicircle law. Uh, namely, that if you looked at the uh, eigenvalue distribution of this matrix, let's call this J, uh, so maybe J over root n, it's the right, uh, right scaling, right? then this converges to the Wigner semicircle law is weak, weakly and in probability. Okay, so so that, that's, that's, that's roughly, roughly what we did. Uh, and I want to, uh, today I want to start with doing some refinements of this, uh, just proving some classical things using these, this representation. Uh, and then we're going to go on and, 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 and uh, talk more about how you can write general beta ensembles this way. Um, so <laughs> the first uh, uh, result that we can prove here is about the top eigenvalue. Okay, so so if you have uh, this GOE, right, you uh, you know that. Uh, you know that the eigenvalue distribution converges to the <coughs> Wigner semicircle law, but, and that kind of tells you that the top eigenvalue uh, it has to be on the top edge of the, of the Wigner semicircle law, or, or it could also be above, right? Because, because uh, this is a convergence in distribution, and, and there is only uh, a convergence of measures, and there is only a measure of 1 over n on the top eigenvalue, so it may disappear in the limit. Uh, so it could still converge to the Wigner semicircle law, even if the top eigenvalue would be much higher. Right? It couldn't be lower, of course, because that would be a contradiction. But 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 could, but it possibly could be higher. So so what's uh, <coughs> so how can you how can you ensure that this doesn't happen? So this is um, you know the this is uh, first was proved by by Komlos and Freddy. This is an old classical result. Okay, and, and we actually want to show that if you look at the top eigenvalue, so we call it lambda 1, uh, and you divide this by square root of n, right, and actually this converges to 2 in probability. Um, so, in fact, uh, this is going to be fairly short. Uh, and here is uh, the dilemma that we knew for it. Okay? Uh, and, and the lemma is, is, is extremely simple. So the lemma just says that if you're looking at 
lambda 1 of a Jacobi matrix. Okay, this is the top eigenvalue of the Jacobi matrix, and this is less than or equal to uh, the max over i of ai plus bi plus bi minus 1. Okay, with the convention that b, b0, which doesn't exist, and bn, which doesn't exist, you just set them to be 0. Okay, so, so this is very simple. Here is, here is how you prove it. <coughs> um, so, actually, right, so the, the simplest truth is that I know is, is, is actually maybe two lines. So, so let's, let's write it like this. So I'm going to write it as J as minus A, A transpose. Okay, where A is going to be some matrix plus the diagonal, plus the di diagonal matrix with these entries. Okay, so if I can do that, uh, and I actually let me write what A is. So it's just going to be the matrix. Um, I think you have zero here. It doesn't matter. You could, uh, and you have B one <coughs> minus B one uh, and B two minus B two, B three minus B three. You have to put square root in here. OK, and then you just put zeros everywhere else. So I hope I did this right. Let me see. <coughs> Maybe I have to do a, a transpose. Yeah, I think I did it right. Mm -hmm. So so uh, right, if you take a, a transpose, then uh, the entries of this matrix are the inner products of the various rows of, rows of a. OK, and as you can see, what, what's going to happen is when you take this inner product, then on the off diag, if you're farther away from the diagonal than one, you just get zero because there is no, because these vectors only have two, um, because the way these vectors work. Right? So, um, if you're on the diagonal, you just get the the sum of the squares of these entries. So the first diagonal will just have b1. Uh, the second one will have b1 plus b2, and so on. And then the, on the other diagonals, you'll just have the b's. Okay. So, okay, so, so I guess that's the end of the proof, basically, uh, because because a transpose only have have non-positive non eigenvalues, right? It's a non-negative definite matrix, and the top eigenvalue of the sum of matrices is less than or equal to the sum of the top eigenvalues. So the top eigenvalue of this is, 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 is that. OK? So that's the end of proof. Um, and so, so here we just have to, mm, in, this, in our particular case, right, so the lambda 1 of GOE um, is just less than or equal to the max over i of this normal i plus chi, i plus chi i minus 1. And so, so you remember that these chi i's, they looked like uh, i plus roughly a normal 0, 1 half. Uh, like that. So, e so most of this max will come from the large chi, as you can see that right away. And there, um, you know, there's some power of n of those that will contribute. And they have Gaussian tails. This, this, these normals here will actually, in the chi's, will actually do have Gaussian tails. So, so this you can give an upper bound of, of square root of n plus some c times root log n, which comes from the Gaussian tails. Okay. 
So, so in fact, we get a reasonably strong bound. I mean, it's not optimal. Uh, sorry, there's a two skirt of n, yeah, because there's a skirt of n here, there's a skirt of n there. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is n minus i, and this should be n minus i plus 1. But it doesn't change uh, anything with what I said. So that's simple enough, I hope. Um, and um, right, this is only for DOE. That's true. Mm -hmm. So, so, and and in general, you know, this 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 kind of things can only be used for for. Um, GOE and some invariant on some was. I'll talk about that a little bit later. At least they, they, they haven't been progressed on how to use it for any other models. <coughs> um, right. So, so this this gives you uh, this gives you that a top eigenvalue cannot go further than an extra log n away, and in fact, you know. Lambda one of GOE, uh, well, you know this from Tracy Widom, is, is equal to two, two, two root n plus some Tracy Widom distribution, Tracy Widom one distribution times n to the minus one six plus smaller order terms. Okay. So, so, so it's not uh, precise, but it's fairly nice. Um, okay, so that's that's Comlos and um, I, I want to show you another thing, which is again, as I mentioned last time, is perhaps the <laughs> the most uh, famous thing now from random matrix theory. It's taught everywhere in engineering, which is the bike benarus pechet transition. <coughs> Okay, so so what is the BBP transition? So so um, well, it actually goes back to goes back all the way to the origins of random matrix theory, right? As you know, random matrix theory doesn't didn't quite start with the Romans and the Egyptians, like everything else in math, but but maybe with the Scots, uh, with Wishart, right? In the, in the 1920s, um, and 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 basically, you know, he was. Using it to study <coughs> thick, thick correlations, right? So when you when you uh, do principal component analysis, then um, right, you look at uh, the top eigenvalues of a sample covariance matrix, and that indicates a co correlation. But you have to make sure that that's not just coming from noise. So that's why you use the Wishart ensemble to put in just random, random. <coughs> data values and see what kind of correlations you would get if you just had noise and nothing else. Uh, if um, so, <coughs> so, so you know the simplest model for Wishart is I'm just going to take G, which is a square. You can of course make this rectangular, but I, I don't want to do that. So, so, so this is IID normal matrix. And, and then you can just look at GG, GG transpose and look at the top eigenvalue of that. Um, so the simplest case of bias benarus pechet is when uh, you look at the non-null case, right? So when there is actually some structure in your data, uh, in your population, what will <coughs> What will the sample covariance matrix look like? What will the top eigenvalue of that matrix look like? So in this Gaussian model, uh, this, the population covariance matrix only matters up to its eigenvalues. That's because of invariance. So you don't really care what the, the, what the exact structure of that matrix is. All you care about what is the what are the eigenvalues. 
the data will have the same distribution as long as the eigenvalues are the same. So, so in the simple, simplest setup, you just uh, you know, put here some diagonal matrix. And you look at the top eigenvalues of this. Okay, so some, some diagonal matrix. Um, and um, the even simplest thing, even more simple thing, of course, if it's the identity, then that's what you had before. Uh, but let's just say that there is one strong correlation. So there is one serious eigenvalue. Let's call that, let's call it strength A squared. Okay. So let's look at this particular matrix. Um, what's going to happen in this case? Um, and so the eigenvalue, I think there is a scaling of n here, and the BBT transmission tells you that uh, this first eigenvalue converges to uh, phi of a squared. Okay, where phi of a is this interesting function. Um, so let's see. So when a is one, well, phi of a, I just write it here. Um, okay, I write it here. So. This is the BBT transition function. This is just two if A is less than or equal to one, and it's equal to A plus one over A if A is greater than or equal to one. Okay. So, so it's, it looks like this. For a while it's two, and, and then here is the x equals y diagonal, and then it looks like that. Okay, and here it's continuously differentiable at that point, but the second derivative is not continuous. Um, so, so what is the interpretation, right? If there is some correlation in your data, uh, then for a while you don't see any of it in the top eigenvalue, in the limiting uh, distribution of the top eigenvalue, right? As long as a is between zero and one, you, have, you, have, you don't detect anything. Which is, of course, a serious problem for statistics, because you'd like to detect, detect something. Um, and then when a goes above, um, above one, then you start, suddenly start to detect uh, the top eigenvalue. And when A is very large, then you sort of have a linear relationship right? <clears throat> between the sample and the population and the sample top eigenvalue. OK? So that this is this is this is uh, so this is actually a theorem, and I think in this form, I think by Ben and Ruth in the original paper they did it for GOE, but this can be done for GOE as well, <clears throat> and has been done since then in 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 various ways. And uh, let me say that of course, the the results in this paper are much more. Uh, refined. So first of all, you can take more than just one, as long as there are finitely many perturbations here. That's one thing. Uh, and you get something similar. And the other thing is that what they really studied, although this thing has proved to be sort of less used uh, later on, is, is what happens exactly at this point. So, so if A is actually below uh, one, then the top eigenvalue still have a Tracy Widom distribution limit. If it's strictly above one, they will have Gaussian fluctuations. Okay. And then in between, here there is a small window in which there is a, a, some kind of deformed Tracy Widom. 
And actually, in the GOE case, that deformed tree Sweden was first defined using these tridiagonal models and their limits. So I'm going to talk about that next time. And it was defined for the GUE case, which is the unitary matrix case in this BBP paper. Any questions? OK. So, so my goal is to give you an idea of, of how this transition arises. Okay, so, uh, and actually, we'll prove a version of it. Now, th this particular one is very nice, but, and you can use it, prove it your tri using tridiagonal models, but I leave it for the problem session, because uh, you can actually do it, and you know, this is the real thing. So I'll, I'll do a version of it for GOE, because we have been working with GOE, so let me just stick with that. Okay. So what's the version for GOE? It's, uh, again, it's a very natural question for GOE as well. Uh, and this is about the uh, non-zero mean GOE. Okay, so, so you can look at what is the top eigenvalue, lambda 1, of just the GOE and my n. Um, and, but you change the mean, okay? So you just add some constant times uh, an all one matrix. Okay? So I'm gonna have, I have to write here what the right constant is. So of course if the constant is small, then this lambda one is not gonna change. And if it's large, then it's gonna be huge. So we have to decide what, here is, what, what I should write here. And, and the theorem says, and this one we're actually going to prove, <coughs> uh, is that what you should put here is some a over root n. Okay? So in some sense, it's, you know, this, if you first look at it, it's surprising, because you, you, know, you take a GOE and, and you increase the mean of those normals by a tiny amount, just one over root n. And already you see, uh, uh, change, and, and the answer is, right, is that this lambda 1, if you divide by root n, because that's the typical thing, is going to be 2 if a is less than or equal to 1, and a plus 1 over a if a is greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So it's just the same function over there, phi of a. So, um, so why, why, where does this phi away come from? Well, it comes from that. But let me give you an even simpler setup where it shows up, just so that you have some feeling. And generally, it shows up in these rank one perturbations of matrices. But, but here is, here's an even simple thing. So if you look at lambda one of the following operator, so you just have um, OK, so this is also a theorem, although I'm not going to prove it. Uh, it's, it sort of uh, helps you think about this GOE case. So if you look at Z plus, OK, this, this, uh, this, uh, this infinite operator acting on L2, and you put a loop of weight A um, at, at, at 0. I guess I guess Z plus is going down. That's why now. <laughs> um, and look at the top, the top uh, lambda one of this. So what does lambda one mean? It just means the top of the spectrum. It's, it's this the spectrum of this is uh, has a continuous part always. And depending on a, it will actually have an eigenvector. If a is large enough, it will have an eigenvector, and the rest of it is continuous. But lambda one is still defined by you know, Rayleigh quotient formula. Right? So it's just the, 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 the maximum of the Rayleigh quotients you can get over all vectors. So just the top of the spectrum. So this is actually, again, as, as you expect, 
uh, is just 2 if a is less than or equal to 1, and a plus 1 over a, a is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, and, and so this now is so simple, right? It's so simple that if anywhere from this you should be able to understand uh, this, this rank one perturbation story, this spike when there special story. Uh, again, right, you have the same thing. The, the spectrum of the Z, Z plus, the top of the spectrum, doesn't change if you put the loop which is small. It changes if you put the loop, which is large. And, and, and why is this change? Well, actually, the change is simple. Uh, there is an eigenvector, which just looks like 1, a inverse, a, mi a to the minus 2, a to the minus 3, and so on. OK? So this thing actually is always an eigenvector. Uh, in the sense that it satisfies the eigenvalue equation for every a. But it's only in L2 when a is greater than 1. Right? Then you can, it's, it's simple. You just plug it in. You see it's an eigenvector. In fact, it's an eigenvector with eigenvalue a plus 1 over a. And, uh, and if there is an eigenvector, then uh, you, have, you get this. And if this is then in L2, then of course it will show up in the spectrum. And there'll be some atom at a plus 1 over a in the spectral measure, for example. <clears throat> so, so this phenomenon of, of you know, um, Doing some rank one perturbation and and it doesn't change for a while is, is very common as you can see in these three cases. Um, and so let's let's uh, this is the one we're going to prove. Okay, but we're going to use this as a as a guidance. And the proof is actually very simple. This mean one GOE. Okay, so, so where does the proof come from? Well, it just comes from the tridiagonalization argument. Okay. So the first observation is that because this is an invariant ensemble, um, it doesn't matter what vector I write here. It's only the length of the vector that matters, right? Because you could just rotate, if I put another vector of the same length, I could just rotate the whole thing back to this thing without changing the eigenvalues. Okay. So instead of, of putting this uh, vector, 1, 1, t, I could just put e1, e1, t. But then, uh, you know, the trade-off is that the length of this is 1, the length of that is, is root n, so, so I have to put square root of an a. Okay, so if, if I replace this term by this term, I get exactly the same distribution for the lambda 1. And so that's the first observation. The second observation is that uh, when I do the tridiagonalization, remember, we, I didn't actually change this. So, what, so what does this look like, right? So this looks like a GOE. And to this corner, you added this term. Okay, square root of n, a. But, so you had whatever you had here, you had some normal, and now you added the square root of n, a to that corner. So when you did the tridiagonalization, this corner didn't actually change. Okay? So you remember, it was, that was actually just untouched, because when you conjugate by those orthogonal matrices, which have ones on the top corner and zeros, first row and first column, that, 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 that corner doesn't change. So, so we, get, right, we get the lambda 1 of, of this uh, 
of this Jacobi matrix, where you have square root of n a. Uh, I guess there is an a and then there is an a one. So sorry about that. And then you have this chi, or maybe put here a normal. Okay, this, this is chi n minus one, chi n minus two. Dot 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 dot. dot. Okay, here you just have a normal again. Chi minus one here. Uh, sorry, so it's, it's, it's one over root n, lambda one of this over root n, right? So you need to show that this converges to phi away in probability. Um, well, so let's look at two cases. Um, case one, um, is when A is less than or equal to one. Um, well, you've already seen that wherever, you know, any limit point has to be at least two. That's just because of the Wigner semicircle law. Right, it's true even if I don't put this A. When I put in this A, that's a positive perturbation. Uh, I want A to be greater than zero. Um, so all the eigenvalues move up a little bit. So you still, any limit point has to be at least two. So now you just have to show that it's at most two. But actually when A is less than or equal to one, you can just use the, you can still use the uh, top eigenvalue bound that we had above with the convolution Friedy. Right, because you, um, A1 has grown by, the first entry has grown by square root of n, but remember the first entry, uh, we had something like max of Ai plus Bi plus Bi minus one. Okay, that's what it was. But this, was, so, so when I equals zero, where I equals one, this guy was zero. And this could have been of the size square root of n, because everywhere else it was square root of n. So, as as, so if you replace, if you increase ai by a1 by square root of n, this max is still not really changing. So, so it's just the original bound works in this case. So, so again, so, so for the upper band, you have, it works just as well as before. So now we have to go to A is greater than one. Um, and here's what you do. So 